behind him to find the damage on the Reckless. Meanwhile, mid lane, it's Mike Young grabbing the dunk on the Kami. Here comes MLHG from China, get their second kill. 这次局面上的选手也都是每个队的，基本上都是核心选手嘛。然后跟他们交手的话，肯定还是能学习到很多东西的。Carson Faker, oh! I'm looking forward to play against Levi. Levi is like a legend already because every single time you see that guy playing on stage, you feel that that's just amazing, right? Oh, you don't find the damage, and Levi turns it around. Being able to play against him, I can see what he does and why he's so good. As everything. Em muốn đối đầu với người dân của đội bóng Mỹ là bởi vì gần đây thì anh ấy khá là nổi tiếng và anh ấy cũng sở hữu một cái lối chơi khá hổ báo và vì thế em muốn đối đầu với anh. Oh, nicely done, Mike Young. The good side of being an All Star is that it's going to help me going forward into my next season. Just to be. Already playing alongside some of these people is going to make me improve so much faster. Hello and welcome back to the 2017 All-Star event where fans return to cheer for their favorite teams. The best players from around the world were voted in by fans of their regions to compete for dominance on the world stage. Of course, we've already one day down, three to go. Here you see Fofo and the rest of the LMS All-Stars. Prey here getting ready in his ready room. The EU All-Stars as well. Power of Evil, smile on his face. And then, of course, we have the Turkish All-Stars as they get ready to take the stage. Hello, everyone. I'm James Das Patterson, joined by analysts who earned their spot after a 1v1 all NASA's free-for-all. Aiden Zyrene Moon, Chris Papasmithy Smith, and Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. A bunch of dirty NASA's pickers, <laughs> all three of you. We had a lot of fun yesterday. We're gonna have I'm gonna challenge you guys to have more fun today than we had yesterday on the analyst test. Let's see if we can do it before we get to the pros prepping on stage. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standings. Group A has LMS at the top with LCK trailing behind at one and one. Over in Group B, the LPL All-Stars reign supreme at 2-0 with North America in second in front of Brazil and Southeast Asia. And for that LPL squad at the top, it looks like their boot camp is paying off dividends. Yeah, it really does. I mean, this is one of the teams that actually talked about all the work they were putting in pre-event. They had a boot camp. They all came together, practiced a lot of games, and they have been taking these perhaps less serious events very seriously. They crushed it at Rift Rivals and are looking to do the same here. Yeah, and their early game hasn't been that great, but those team fights, the LPL China team fights, reign true. That late game, I love seeing it here at All Stars because they just pop off eventually. I mean, that game alone there, right? NA versus China, quadra kill for Sneaky. That's a return quadra kill for CA in order to get the win. So a close game ultimately falling in favor of the Chinese All-Stars. Over in Group A, we've got the All-Star team from the LMS who took a major victory over Korea on the back of Carson's play. Yeah, really impressive performance from Carson, but also the LMS All-Stars. This game was in their grasp the entire time. The Korea match, they looked great against Turkey as well. The pentakill for BB in his retirement tournament. This has been a really big day for the LMS yesterday. They're looking to follow it up. They have their uh, future in their own hands. If they win their first assignment today, they're 3-0. They top their group. I mean, such a short group stage. We'll see who can make a last-minute push through the groups with our battles today. First up, we have the team sent by the European fans who are going to face off against the TCL All-Stars. Then the team from NA matches up versus the squad from Southeast Asia with a round robin for both groups completing before we jump into the 1v1 tournament. Now, in the event of a tie in either group, game records will be broken by coaches selecting a player to face off in a 1v1, with three-way ties being seeded into a 1v1 bracket based on win time times as you see here there's lots of information to absorb after just one day of games and everything that i yep. just threw at you so across two groups the ruins reforged what stands out to you guys so far on this preseason patch we've been having aggressive junglers thankfully yep. i mean it's so exciting to see these guys popping off on kazix and i'm looking forward to seeing perhaps some rengar some Xin Zhao. the jarvins are back you know looking at worlds it was all about tanks it's all about warding and we've been even seeing challenging smite people going super aggressive and the thing about that is usually you need the tracker's knife in competitive play. You need to put down the vision. The rune I'm looking at that's really been pivotal, especially yesterday, was the zombie ward. The fact that when you pick up the kill, the fact that when you put down the vision, clear it, you're getting extra vision on the map. 
it can actually set up scenarios where you think back to that LCK loss, which felt like the traditional game where they were playing the macro well, that eventually they'd be able to get back into it. The fact that the vision never dropped off, that Karsha on the top side was getting down vision through zombie wards, plus the vision on the bot side was working, there was more vision on the map, things were safer, they closed out the game. Yeah, and for me, it's been, there's just more damage in the game overall. We're coming out of an ardent sensor, team fight, tanky meta mm -hmm. at Worlds, and now we're in one where everybody's playing these long-range poke uh, champions, because the way you increase your survivability is just stay as far, as far away as possible from the damage <laughs> yep. so you can live. And that's what's really been standing out to me. I don't know if aggressive junglers will become a thing because it's so hard to play them. Like, people want engage. They want tanks to get in there on right. those poke guys. That's kind of my opinion. Right, on but the current meta is very much the damage is coming. It's yep. just about how yeah. long, how much of a buffer can you kind of create between yourself and that damage yeah. before you get popped. Exactly, and who's going to bring it, too? Because I do think aggressive junglers can work in the right compositions. Pretty good engages, one-shotting the AD carry. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Right, the yeah. Cosmic just <laughs> pops up right on you from invisibility. <laughs> it's good. I love it. All right, but we'll see which, uh, what else, rather, the Dream Team's managed to break out on Summoner's Rift. But we can't forget later in the day, the 1v1 tournament continues. Faker versus Bjergsen being one of the big matchups we have today. Yeah, I love this matchup because it's Bjergsen, who's the 2015 All-Star 1v1 champion, versus Faker, who, you know, he's the unkillable Demon King, but at the same time, he hasn't taken 1v1 seriously in the last two years. I mean, his two stars have been talked about in the same breath for a long time. They've been compared, they've been scrutinized. People have their different camps, their different groups of thought. So just seeing them 1v1 is a red streak. And I'm honestly just looking forward to seeing if we're gonna get some mirror matchups. That's what I sure. always uh, love about the 1v1s when these two players are not afraid to back down. If we can get some Zed versus Zed, some Zoe versus Zoe, I would be hyped. On the bottom half of the bracket here, of course, we have Uzi, the defending champion against BRTT, who had that one CS difference differential win over Sneaky just yesterday, of course. Prey, Sword Art, Reckless, and Zite not still waiting to play their first game. And Uzi vs. BRTT is one I'm really focused on just because 280 carries both of them, maybe the most famous player ever from their regions. BRTT runs the Draven that's kind of a blocker pick to the 80 carries that Uzi likes to focus. Is there going to be a Draven ban? Will he leave it up and style on him? That's going to be fun to watch. I mean, Azale, you mentioned we haven't had any mirror matchups yet, but we did have some highlights yesterday yeah. mm -hmm. in the 1v1s. Uh, you know, the first one that comes to my mind, the Orianna versus Pantheon, the kill under turret with essentially like three health remaining on the Pantheon. Yeah, and I mean, the key thing here is the Pantheon passive. He gets the reset on it, able to actually block the turret shots and survive, and then Mako, in what is a blind pick, it felt like he got countered by this Lux. He's able to pull it off. Minions oh. giving the final killing blow there. You got to feel for it there, though, because, you know, it's <laughs> just like, oh, that's the worst. The worst feeling is knowing there's nothing you can do in that situation except mm -hmm. for except your day. Yeah, he had yeah. already made the mistake. He went for a last hit, and then he went, oh, shit, and started sweeping. Yeah. Right. Make sure they didn't have vision of him, but the minions are already, already Minions too strong. Yeah, minions. Minions OP. All right, well, that's going to do it for us here at the Analyst Desk. Make sure to join in on the conversation by tweeting at LOL Esports and let us know what 1v1 matchup do you want to see and why. Make sure to use that hashtag AllStar2017, and we'll share some throughout the show. Time now to send it over to Freak and Kobe over in the Battle Arena to get us into Game 1. Thank you very much, Dash. Hello, everyone. My name is David Freak Truly. Joining me on the council desk is my North American All-Star, Sam Kobe hartman Ken. Thank you, Freak. I appreciate you. I appreciate you even more. We're introducing our two teams now who need to pick up a win if they want to make it out of groups. Up first, on the blue side, the European All-Stars with Soaz in the top lane. Yankos in the jungle, Power of Evil in mid, Reckless in the bot lane alongside Ignar at support with Coach Youngbuck. And facing off against them, on the red side, will be the representatives from Turkey. Up top is Thaldrin in the jungle, Stone Mage in mid, Frozen, bottom, Zeitnot, and supporting Zergstein. Coach Pades will be on stage, of course, behind them, getting them ready for champion select. It's going to be a fun one. Now, I want to talk about these teams, of course, a little bit. Despite taking a loss from Korea in their first game, Europe did show some signs of early life in that game. Yeah, I mean, Korea is the, you know, number one, basically, coming yeah. into this tournament. Yeah. So, uh, not too much... Uh, you know, hate given to the European squad for that loss. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of room to make up there today, though. Two games, uh, you know, so as we saw him already displaying use of the spell book. Yep. People were super excited. Is he going to take, like, Ignite on Maokai <laughs> early? Exhaust no. Switch around the spells. <laughs> use it for the cooldown reduction on your summoner spells. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Yankos also, he was talking about how snowbally the game was. Mm -hmm. So that was another aspect that we were... Uh, kind of observing here. Sure. Um, it, it really has been a snowball-y preseason because, yes, everyone loves, there's a lot of damage available, mm -hmm. um, and people have been loving to play Assassins and Long Range Poke, yeah. uh, but also some of the vision is becoming more snowball-y with this zombie award rune that everyone's taking. 
Um, and if you really can get some early game leads and start setting up that vision and clearing out enemy vision, yeah. it really does propagate across the entire map. And that's where we've seen a lot of the competitive strengths uh, of the snowball come in. Absolutely. So we'll see if the European LCS squad can snowball a victory against Turkey, who melted against the LMS yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> we did have a couple of head scratchers in that game. Yeah. There was the Lulu pick, which we were pretty much in the camp of bottom lane support right now is so much about either lots of damage and poking, mm -hmm. Zara support uh, and all these types of things, or super tanky, hard engaged, Leonas and Alistars coming yeah. out. But you actually went with the, the Lulu, didn't, didn't really work out for them. Yeah. They also let through Zoe, so I think Champion Select might be one uh, area that they're going to look to revamp here coming into day two. Right. It's hard with preseason. You know, there's so many changes, sure. and they had a different take. Yeah, they've all got different takes. And these are actually two teams that both played against Zoe and didn't pick it themselves yesterday. So we'll be uh, interested to see what comes through on this one as Power of Evil and Frozen may not have practiced a champion coming in. And we might see our second game where she goes unpicked entirely as neither have shown the tendency yet. Or, you know, someone practices overnight and they're ready to go. That's the thing about Zoe, right? A lot of people have been complaining about it, but she does take of quite a few games to actually get good on. And if, if these guys, you know, haven't had time to practice the champion and you're not going to be, you know, landing any combos or being yep. able to think Aww, about how the champion he works, then you'd rather ban her yeah, and sure, sure. keep her out of the game. Meanwhile, Orin, everyone knows, and is actually pretty bonkers. Ezreal got to get played once by Uzi. He won the game. Everyone's shocked by this one, but uh, banned away by the Turkish All-Stars as well. So the question is, do they ban away Zareth? That's the one we've seen. Misfortune, uh, actually already gone, sorry. No, Orianna, they're targeting PoE a little bit more with the bans there, but that does mean there's that Zareth right away first pick. Yeah, Zareth definitely highly prized. Uh, Power of Evil already played it once in mid. As we said, it can be support in this meta as well, but... Uh, you know, with Turkey already showing the other side, as we mentioned, a lot of the hard engage, uh, you know, has been used in that area. They might want to keep that one for Power of Evil sure. in the mid lane. It definitely does have huge strengths when sieging uh, and really excels when there are a lot of low health champions on the board. And we're seeing uh, the chance of engage coming through for Turkey, of course, the natural counter to hard siege is trying to find the hard engage themselves. They're waiting on the Leona though, but Jin, Jarvan both have ways of getting the team into the fight. The AD carry pool really has been another hot topic in the preseason and, and yeah. coming here with the competitive guys all focusing on lethality comments. You no, know, it's the Varus, Jin, Misfortune, and then Ezreal is in his own little yeah, <laughs> corner over there with strong. the Kleptomancy, but yeah. the other three uh, are what you do expect to see. So I'd probably expect Europe to pick up a Varus before second round of bands come through. You know, Misfortune's already off the board. Sure. You don't really want to get locked out of those. You, it, it is possible still to use the AD carries we saw at Worlds, though. So if they get pushed into Tristana or something, you can go for kill lanes with Tristana, you know, try and combo there. Sure. Uh, it definitely is still a viable option. It's just what we would expect Turkey to ban out next round of bans would be yeah. the Varus to try and force them in that direction. And that might come through. Of course, Europe decided that it was more important to secure Tom Kent before anything else went away. You would see Leona hover before those hard engaged champions certainly threatening. So supporting the Zareth with a great disengage tank, chomp him up, walk him away, make sure he's safe. Yanko's also high price on Kha'Zix. Fun to see. I love the champion. We're going to see him run around on the prowl. I'm extremely excited because I've been spamming pretty much only Kha'Zix uh, and Xin Zhao in the, nice. in the preseason uh, yeah. when he's not banned. There are so many interesting little tricks that you can actually do with Kha'Zix right now uh, that we'll have to wait to get into in the game, but it really does uh, you know, help out your mid laner as well quite a bit. So we'll see if they can play around that Zareth. Here we go though, Sivir ban instead yeah. of the Varus already. And I don't think Sivir actually gained much from the preseason changes. I felt like she doesn't have the best keystones really herself. Comet doesn't trigger off the W. Aerie, I'm pretty sure should, but that feels kind of weird. And you guys in Fever, so like, it's not like mana flow ban suddenly made you, you know, forget your, your mana concerns. So she's just not like a great user, one of the best runes in the game. But either way, interesting that they're getting rid of Reckless's more comfort picks, and we'll see what he actually goes for himself. No LeBlanc for the mid lane of Frozen. Of course, LeBlanc would certainly prey on Zareth pretty well. So looking at the counter picks that Europe expects out of Frozen. And I would like to touch on top lane as well, as that was the last pick here from Turkey. And Nar, Nar has been so big. Top lane's really uh, had a resurgence, kind of, when they've had some uh, semi-carry top laners like this. Yeah. Nar can either take uh, the airy or the press the attack. And we've seen already in this tournament, uh, an early fed Nar can ex just take over the entire game. Yeah. So, and Thaldrin is the captain of this Turkish team. So he he's going to be very happy to have that champion. And they actually, since they're focusing the AD carry bans here, no further top lane bans have come out. So as we'll have a pick of the litter here to try and counter. 
Absolutely the case, and it might be Meow Kai for himself. We've seen that one be a great matchup in an R before, especially with the gank assist. We actually saw the exact situation of a uh, Kha'Zix ganking a Maokai at level mm. 3, one-shotting a Nar and starting the snowball. That was Karsa against Korea, so maybe the same thing going to happen here for Europe. Have to wait to see. Echo, of course, removed from Frozen, his most uh, beloved champion. So he goes down to Malzahar here in the matchup. Certainly doesn't quite have the same... You have the flash ult to get the, the, mm -hmm. the ganks off, but you're getting poked out of lane otherwise. You don't have a lot of reach, I feel like. And and usually, I would just like the defensive ults, uh, honestly, with Malzahar nowadays. If Kha'Zix jumps in, that is your primary target. Mm -hmm. If you can try and get him before he goes invisible, uh, which, you know, that is up to the Kha'Zix to try sure, and immediately sure. <laughs> R after getting in there, uh, then it can really ruin his day. You are right, Tristana going to be the one to pick up here. And Tom Kench certainly does have, at least in the laning phase, the chance to go aggressively. Mm -hmm. So you could have some pretty explosive all-ins in the bot lane. Waiting to see now the support for Turkey. I'm kind of excited that we are seeing these scenes. Because uh, theoretically, I was like, okay, yeah, you can still use these World's AD carries. And Tristana yeah, is still sure. good, right? Um, but now we're actually going to see it in practice here with Red. Oh, dog champ! A dog champ for yes. Soaz! It all stars! I don't know if it's actually good into Nar specifically, but he's going to go for it anyway. I love it. So, uh, yeah, we had one Nasus at Worlds this year, and it was against Soaz. Uh -huh. He had a very hard time against Khan from Longju. But now we've got, I believe that was the matchup, right? Yeah, we'll have to check on, on his room page if he decides to go with the fastest Nasus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Phase Rush, Mana Flow Band, Everything. get the stacks forever. Probably going to be Soaz's very own special dog champ mm -hmm. room page. He's, he's had it ready here. Well, we are on 723. Actually, Kleptomancy is one of the best keystones on NASA because it, in this patch, gives yeah. 25 bonus range. So your Q autos actually reach a bit farther. Uh, that Trundle pick is going to be going support almost definitely. I'm pretty sure that Nara is going top lane. Uh, and that means a pretty interesting duo because you have the pillar to kind of set up some of the, the Jin snipes. And Trundle himself is pretty tanky, making it a bit hard for the European duo to get through that. Let's yeah, see how it goes. I, I really do kind of like it as well because in the bottom lane, it's not like you're going to pick Leona or something, right? There's a Tom Kench already, yeah. and it's difficult to, uh, to even focus him down. So picking up that Trundle, they'll have the Shred for later for either the Tom Kench or the Nasus, whichever one mm -hmm. is uh, in range. Sure. The pillar's even good at disengaging an Nasus in a fight as well. If he doesn't have the slow resist from Phase Rush, you can push him off your team. Definitely, uh, zone control has been really big because as yeah. much as we like to talk up the, the individuals, team play has really shown through here sure. so far. If just one play of a tournament already. It's been a big deal so far, even though it's only a sort of semi-serious event. It's been awesome for some of these players. I know, uh, I think someone had said, uh, oh yeah, my Midler hasn't even played any Zoe yet. Yanko said he never played against the champion yet at all. It's been banned every game he's played. So <laughs> not everyone has all the practice, right? And uh, either way, they're still representing their home reach, representing their own pride, and hoping to pull up some wins with the squads. Europe and Turkey both 0-1 coming into the day, but certainly a chance for both these squads to make it back in. We'll see what can come through. To get ourselves into the very first game of the day, day two of All-Star 2017 begins now. So, Airy Nasus, not a huge surprise. I'll actually get my rune updates pretty shortly. Ignar going Spellbook, though, I'm excited about. And uh, press the attack, no surprise on Tristana. Everything else looks pretty normal based on what we've seen so far. Yeah. It's funny that Spellbook as well on Malzahar is the norm. Is the norm, yeah. Uh, because we've seen the, uh, you know, laning, more laning oriented teleport and stuff like that later. But a teleport on a Malzahar late game? Mm -hmm. You never really get much use out of it because it's not really a, a split pusher. He doesn't, he wants to team fight more and then it does fall off. So it's kind of nice for the Malzahar to be able to transition into a super high mobility flash ghost combination. Yeah. Um, really does allow him to get off his ultimate on the primary target. Difficulty this time around though, he's playing against the Tom Kench. So he's definitely gonna have to worry about where Ignar is and Minions the denial been. of his very impactful ultimate. Absolutely. It's gonna be a fun one here. I wanna point out Reckless's uh, secondary rune choices. His, his primaries are all very standard. Reckless went Domination Secondary for the when you jump, you gain bonus uh, lethality, which is a sudden impact, and also Eyeball Collection to get a bunch of bonus AD. So he's going for a pretty all-in heavy sort of rune page. Statistically in solo queue, uh, sudden impact is actually not that great on Tristana because you don't rocket jump actually all that often. But he's going for all-in, it's going to be on for him. Yeah, like I said, you can still go for those kills. Here we go with Ignar. Making his way into the jungle already. Gets a lick off of uh, Zert Sting, and yep. he's going to have to return to lane. So as unlucky. 
down to two-thirds HP. Does have Iron Skin in second wind. He did go for the, the more sustain-based stuff based on the matchup, which makes total sense for him. But yeah. still not going to be easy to play an Asset Anar, I feel like. Yeah, and as we said before, Thaldrin here, Captain, huge playmaker for Turkey. This is definitely a guy that should be talked up. And he got his hands on the Nar. He's got a good early trade onto Soaz. And meanwhile, down bottom lane. Yep. Yeah, they're okay. He got the stun off. Of course, there's no chomp just yet until these three minions die right here. But once that happens, Zerg's has got to give some more respect over to Ignar. You can tell the type of game they're looking for, though. Meanwhile, yeah. uh, Stone Mage has gone for buff to buff. So he still is level two. But technically, that's all Jarvan needs to be able to get off the combo, as well as Electrocute. So. And the Hop's already gone behind him. So I just not have a way out. Buys a little bit of time, but he's not going to burn much. Here comes the rest of the team. The flash to follow. Oh! Oh, first blood. Yes, Yankos. The first blood king is here already. Looking for more to his crown. Added another notch to the belt. Looking to knock down Stone Mage. Bit more damage coming through. 100 HP left on him. Out goes the Jarvan. Ah, Bug Champ saves Dog Champ. He's got <laughs> the counter here. Yankos comes in. Not only that, but Yankos did the three camp blue side clear. So after the bad trade from Soaz, or even probably before it, they were already thinking around this you know, vulnerable uh, yeah. Nasus here up on the top side. So really do like the choice here from Yankos to hang around. He's being very efficient, killing a camp yep. while being in range for this counter game. If you watch the minimap, he takes the blast cone, jumps over, immediately gets in to flash on Thaldrin before he's able to generate enough for the transformation. Mm -hmm. He had one more, you know, either auto attack or Q or something to get off before the Meganar would have transformed. Yeah. Uh, but Yankos is able to kill him off before that does come through, and they almost even took down Stone Lounge after. Yeah, and I really got to give props to, to Yankos. You saw him kite his Gromp up. This is before they ever saw Jarvan. He's cutting the Gromp up the top side towards the Blast Cone. He's waiting for the counter gank, thinking it's going to come in. Exactly. That's why we talked about the forethought put into it yeah. uh, and the planning here. Jungling is so much about that. And now after that gank, you have to think about how does the jungling actually affect the lane matchup? Because Nasus, this is going to be probably a couple extra points here from Soaz into the E. He does have Aerie himself. You can clear the waves very easily with it, uh, but you can also get good harassment down. Mm -hmm. And now that he has uh, gotten some extra breathing room here uh, and a little bit of extra time uh, up on this Nasus, we'll, we'll see him scale a lot more comfortably into the late game. The case so right now, Yanko's going to take away some of this Gromp gold for his opponent. Was able to see, yep, Stomach had eight CS and, and the two buffs. He knew what camps were taken and runs away to take away the bottom jungle. Sweeps out. I don't know if he actually saw Zerg Sting, but certainly uh, Kha'Zix is known, but jumps over the wall and stays safe for himself. So Yankos just fine and has a little bit of camps left in the bottom. I'm going to clear if he wants to. Level four to level three in Stone Mage is actually going to go for round two towards the top side, but with Soaz under the turret, not an easy dive. But might just look to scout out the jungle. Yeah, there's not much he can do offensively, so it's much more of a getting control here for Thaldrin to allow this Nar to continue to try and pressure. You know, mini form very annoying for so as to deal with at the moment, but so I should be able to last hit there under the turret. As he said, getting a couple more points in the now. Ooh, early smite! Yanko steals it away! An early smite from Stomage gives that one an option. Has a flag and drag out, but got nothing for the counter jungle. This is such a bad spot for Stomage. He is level three, no mana. He could be stunned. No, no flash. flash. Good juke. Oh, if Pee-wee had held onto that E a little bit longer and made him commit to going upwards, that might have been a kill for Yankos to chase through. But either way, Stomage just nothing much to farm, and he's down two levels. This brings up another really cool topic about the preseason, though. Uh, people were complaining so much about jungle catch-up experience that it, it was heavily nerfed. Now, not only is it less experience, but it's also only on the big monsters. Yep. Uh, so, Stomage, so Mage, is level three, and Yankos has already been counter jungling. Level five Kha'Zix, yep. plus vision in his jungle. It's absolutely insane how big this lead is. Aldrin's Mega Nar, he's gonna be able to stun Soaz, who kites it back. Now the damage outputs here, and PoE secures the kill for the top lane. Thank <laughs> you very much. I did all the work. Thanks for the kill. Yeah, that feels good for Power of Evil. Uh, I guess Yankos was like, fine, whatever. I'm already pretty fed. I have a giant lead. And they're all gonna continue to pressure here, but this is a breath of fresh air for uh, Stone Mage because, as he said, he was completely counter jungle. There's vision all over, and now he gets to slide in. Yeah, it's bad for him. His top laner died, but he gets to soak up some lane yep. minions, like, at least. Well, up to level four, he's keeping up in this game. Just a uh, very little bit here. Frozen kills a control board. And he's got some CS, but pink down a kill means he's doing better in this lane. Power of Evil is not only 
Four stone out of his own jungle once they got that kill top lane. So it looks pretty good for this Comet Zerith. Nice little pillar blocks off Ruckus, but Rocket jumps away down to one third HP. Really gonna have to keep track now. What is Yankos gonna be able to do with this lead? Because it is absolutely massive. Uh, now that he is level six and he has been able to evolve the R, it opens up everywhere for gank opportunities. One of the little tricks that I've learned here in the preseason, walking through the brush, you can get almost all the way to the middle of mid lane, uh, but if you just activate your R while you're still invisible, it extends the range and it extends the duration there, so you can gank anyone without them you know, having any sort of vision on you and hold on to your leap until they react with some sort of flash or whatever their escape is. It really does make uh, his level six ganks impactful, so he can now uh, basically have his pick of any lane that he wants to go to. And we were talking about the bottom lane. You know, they, they wanted to get into it. Reckless even took the uh, sudden impact rune to try and have some all-ins on Tristana. So maybe he shows that area a little bit of love. Sure. Might happen here for himself. Power of Evil uh, does not have the uh, kills yet, but he went for free boots. He'll get them a little bit. That'll be fun for him. His runes. He's got the biscuits as well. Gank also still looking for something to do in this topside jungle. Zergsting. The lead might have seen him with that warp, but gonna come tight back around. Puts the ward down for the blue buff. Now something in a 1v2. Chomps of Blast Cone gets away, but now the blue buff's gonna be attacked by Yankos. And the ward sees where Jarvan is coming from. So it's a bit of a race against how this guy can join. And open up for Zeet now wants to get his team back Ooh. in. That's Luma Reset. Oh, 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 wow! Zero four, they dodge it all away, but at least gets the blues saved so far for Stonemage. Oh man, that is not the way you want to start out a skirmish, but here comes four members to tackle this blue buff. Can they take him down? It's in Fog of War, they're gonna get it. The Q goes over to Frozen, thank you very much. Blue for him. All right, so hey, even though you missed the, the Jin shots, it did make Europe run away. I can't complain too badly about this one. 1200 gold difference game though. And there's still a lot of wounds to lick right here. The bot lane is going to be the place to be attacked. Here comes the next bit of assassination. In they jump, Gamba. Got to get one already. Looking for number two. Zergsting going to run out of health. Down he goes. Yankov making the Turkish score line zero for four and kills his butt. <laughs> I like the last stop here from Reckless. He jumps in, gets some to impact, and immediately flashes back out. Actually, uh, now we have Stone Mage coming down as well. He's low health. He's a bit alone. Yankov's going to get a bit of damage. Okay, no choice to be had, but with the wave pushed in, it's going to be just some XP gain and nothing else. We were right, though. Yankos went down bottom to try and help out, uh, you know, Reckless, and they were yep. able to make use of it. So Reckless was able to grab one of those kills. Meanwhile, Soa is on the top side. Oh, uh, he's chasing them with her. So, timed out now. He pops the ultimate, and Thawden's like, but I can just walk away from you. He gets rid of the uh, nullifying orb shield there, but otherwise not a ton to be gained. Holds still up for the uh, Turkish top laner. Watch that bot lane fight again. Remember, this is after uh, they forced the Jin cooldown, so there's no ultimate. There's no chance for him to use it, though, as PoE was hitting his ult shots. There's Reckless, hops in, immediately flashes out as uh, Zerxing turns around to give him the bite. But it was nice. He get, he provided the slowest that PoE could land a few more shots there and land that last ulti charge. And I think it was actually the right choice, even though flashing away seems silly. I, I do like what Reckless did there. I like people going for all-star plays. I agree. All-star tournament. I like going for all-star plays all the time, unless they're on my team in solo queue, in which case, calm down, don't feed. Look at this damage output. Seat not yet. Health down to one half HP. Whoop. And they're going to have a little bit more coming in as Ignar brings some teammates. None of the CC landing. The juke shoes are in, but does it matter? Oh! PoE! Shot down, oh, oh, oh. the first kill over. Typical NA mid laner dying on the tower dive, and now Ignar gonna get shot down as well. Double kill, but Yankos mopping up in the mid lane. Five, because of him. Oh no, PoE just whiffing all over the place here, and Zeitnot gives him the yeah. one, two. Bullet to the head, and he's going down. Meanwhile, Yankos is able to kind of stabilize it there for yes. Europe in the mid lane. Remember, uh, Europe still does have the 1,000 gold lead, but uh, Turret taking a lot of damage here. Reckless wants to do it. move. Reckless jumps in, gets the charge down. A few more shots will do him in. That might be enough for lethal damage. See, not chases and does get killed, and Reckless jumps back out. The best he could have done, and now Zerg Sting is just going to get splatted. So as to get someone's first kill of the game. Ah, the Turret gold a little too juicy there. Yep. Reckless is able to... Utilize the Guerrilla Warfare skin and jump in from the outside. Does end up getting another kill. So, as he said, you know, the world's AD carry is very, uh, very much still viable. And now that the early game, they're getting some kills onto him, he's going to scale extremely well. Oh, yeah. So the Omega Squad going to get themselves the first trip of the game. Slowly but surely. But no one's going to stop them. No one else rushing turrets nearly as fast. 
bonus of gold, 275 apiece to the bot lane here of the European All-Stars. Feels pretty good for them. That gold lead, quite massive, about 4K. Take another look at the highlight here that we had. Power of Evil gets the ticket in under the turret here from Ignar. Throws off the stun, don't need that one. Q is dodged out very nicely though. Can't really blame him for that one. Nice moves there from Jin, and they're able to get the shots landing this time around, even with the flashes. Ooh, Stone Age. This never saw him coming. Just so juicy right there. Yanko's able to slip in. Easy work with Kha'Zix. Three kills now for the European all salt jungler. Man, this was the whole time. He literally, I think, couldn't have known other than trying to guess. So. It's the freest thing. The yeah. first time I, I utilized that and I was able to get all the way across mid lane, I was like, wow, <laughs> this is really good. That's very, very strong. <laughs> It is, it is. Welcome to having an easy roll, Kobe. Here we go in the top lane, though. Stomach's coming to help out Thaldrin. So as uh, says, I'll just keep farming. It's okay. My Q's on half cooldown. I'm ulting just to get the farm going. Also, he's got a stronger jungler, so here they Game go. Cross is in the mix. POE shows up for a couple of shots in and helps get the first kill across. Diego's watching back out of the Cataclysm. And now Soaz has turret aggro. He's got to be careful. When are they going to join into this one? He's pulled the aggro. Nice jump back, and no stun's going to land. Stone Mage! Woo! Survives the comedy, gets away with it. All right, here comes another challenger. Frozen has arrived, 1v3. Ulti comes across the pressure. They're flashing away. Will the damage be enough? Malefic Vision is just not visual enough. Nothing picked up there. Top lane turret now undefended. And that will be turret number two for the Europe All-Stars. Meanwhile, we have a little bit of a rotation. Bottom lane for the Turkish squad is rotated up to mid to try and uh, hold this one, it looks like. And the European All-Star duo are also going to answer them. And it will be a standoff as top lane turret goes down. That's two turrets for the European squad. And the map is really starting to become their territory. Yeah, they're taking over a lot of this right now. We'll see if they keep pushing forward. Getting rid of the mid lane waves for now. Ocean Drake is up. It's still useful, just it's not that like three, 10 minute ocean is super bonkers insane. Either way, though, PoE has actually neglected to go for Merlinomicon, just relying on Mana Flow Band and maybe this Glitter Ocean Drake for his Mana Regen tools. Reckless going in with the Yankos. The double jump squad is here. So as Flashkin for the Wither on the Zeet Knot. No way out for the Jin. A quick chop. Make sure he's safe thanks to Ignar. And now Stone Mage stuck alone under the turret. A triple kill for the European AD Carry All-Star in Reckless. And he's just destroying this game now. 404 for Yank up the whole squad doing so well. Yep, they're also going to be able to take the objective afterwards, icing on the cake here. Now with all the outers down, all objectives are basically just on the checklist here for Europe. They get to check off the Ocean Drake here now, and it is going to be the Zombie Ward Snowball that we kind of talked about. They can just move in, plant everything with vision, and really make use of the giant gold lead they've been able to accrue in the early game. Because if you look across at the Turkish squad, mm -hmm. you know, yes, there is uh, a Nar up there, but he's a 0-3 Nar. He hasn't been able to get a huge amount of gold. He's yeah. been he's been utilizing the matchup pretty well and, and earning that CS difference, but uh, with all the kills coming through for Europe, uh, there's not much that uh, they're going to have to worry about. He plugs the gold holes a bit with that turret kill up there, but it's still more than 5,000 apart. Snipe! Power of Evil! Grabbed uh, himself the blue buff, I do believe. Top side as well. Ignar has uh, been able to walk up here behind Thalton. I don't know what he's going to be able to do as uh, support Tom Kench, though. 1v1 with the team captain. <laughs> Gets ulted and goes, uh, still chasing you, though, because Yankos is on the hunt. Looking for this one here. Thaldrin will be back to Mininar. Gets the bit of move speed from the W pass. But here comes Snipe number one, two, and not range for three. But the damage up was so high. The tongue lashes in. And another kill for Yankos. He's unstoppable. Ah, uh, Tom Kench, beautiful here. Able to get the tongue lick for the extra slow. Then also turret aggro denied. Eats him up. I think it's the only time anyone's called Tom Kench beautiful, Kobe. <laughs> Uh, I ab I appreciate multiple forms of beauty, uh, including big toads. Yes, <laughs> great. You know what? That's fine. Not my taste, but you know what? You do you, buddy. Throw the two and kills. Reckless on the beautiful Tristana. You know what? I, that was terrible. We're going to move on. <laughs> uh, either way, though, Stone Mage looking for some action to the bot side. Almost predicts the flat, but power people goes over the knockup. Either way, though, with the Demolish up here, getting some damage, they're not going to stay for it. All right, Turkey looking to get some ground back for themselves. As you said earlier, Thaldrin was able to get the top turret before they chased him all the way back down and were able to get the kill. So they did get some gold back for themselves, but it's going to be difficult to mount the comeback this time around. Here you go. Soaz with the dive, able to get his ult off after action. Didn't even need it. It was the Tom Kench once again. He's the real star. He is the real star. Absolutely. Beautiful champion. Doing well for himself. And now, 
Rift Herald also going down. Yanko's gonna grab that. Yes, he will. And we'll see what the next target is going to be. 3 to 1 in turrets, 12 to 2 in kills. Europe definitely bouncing back quite nicely from their loss yesterday. And looking to maybe wind this one down when they get the chance to. Still only 17 minutes in. Got quite a bit of League of Legends to go. Uh, but waiting for the next objective here. So I was looking towards the bottom side. He was about to score off against Thaldrum. Both of them have left the lane for now, though. You can see how afraid Zaitna is of what could be around. You saw him sniping from far away, trying to get the wave clear. So he'll be fine. Has some wards to to keep himself a bit safe. Yeah, plan for Turkey right now is kind of the defensive huddle here where they mostly position themselves around their turrets with uh, pink wards through the their own jungle to try and make it safer to diverse from turret to turret and wait for a mistake from, from Europe. You know, the one thing about All-Stars is everyone looks to make All-Star plays and YouTube highlights. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't actually punish those if uh, Europe decides to go for a dive and Ignar is not around to save them. And then Turkey might be able to turn something around. As we've been talking about, though, you're pretty comfortable in their situation. Yep. Looking pretty good for themselves. I want to point out Yankov's not quite going for the full hardcore build that uh, we had seen out of Karsa yesterday. Has gone for Green Smite and also getting himself towards the Fade. So not quite as hardcore, but looking for more Zergs. And goodbye, Ooh. deleted already. Turned back to an egg. And now over the wall, Stomach just a flash out for this one. Couple snipes from Zaitna, and it does not seem to matter. A couple of nice jukes away. Got rid of some of PUE's shots. Another bot lane turret under fire, though, and the whole squad is here ready to deal the damage. And a 4v5. 5 being in their squad. Bot lane tier 2 fall. Rift Herald still available for Yankos. All right, I'm going to check in here on the stacks for Soaz, because that's the yes. coolest part about Nasus. 147, it was just at a couple of seconds ago. He did go for that Emax I was talking about sure. uh, with him. So it's not the highest numbers that you're looking for because he wasn't yeah. just concentrating on stacking it up. Uh, but still, he is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Going to provide the tankiness. He has gone for the Righteous Glory. We saw him before yeah. flashing in just to get in range of Wither. Now he won't have to use his Summoner spell. He can just use his Speed. Uh, and that really is one of the most annoying uh, spells to deal with. Yeah, absolutely the case. And Good luck. I mean, the thing like, at least a little bit for the Turkish squad is none of them really need attack to be that badly. So Wither is like a bit less annoying than it could have been. Oh, XP time. Yankos gets the Rift Herald on the wrong spot of the map. He just parts it there. Maybe that was on purpose. I'm not sure. Oh, my word. He's gone. Cauldron deleted. Who needs stacks? Plus six for Soaz. And he's got another one. Jumps over the wall. Gets suppressed, but it's not going to buy him much time. Oh, no. Perfect timing. Soaz. Not quite going to get it. Is he going to save it for the stack? No, he's going to take it with the E. No extra stacks there. Triumph keeps Yankos alive. I think it was Triumph. Either way, he's slinking away. And now Soaz has someone else to target here. Stonemage, not a lot of mana. Oh! <laughs> Ignar, you are beautiful. Power of Evil gets that kill. 16 to 2. Where are you going, boy? Ignar licks him up. Able to take him out in a combo. And another kill goes through. All right, eyes on Reckless now. He's got his crit combination in addition to the uh, Quicksilver Sash already built up, so he has no one to fear at this point. Yeah, not even Malzahar can look at him scarily and keep him in place. Reckless knows how to get away with those tricks. Blue buff. Oh no, not the evil eye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Reckless got an eyeball collector. He's ready to go for all of this. It's not even a problem. So <laughs> I, I, I want to say it's on purpose. Thank you for going back to it, Observers. I think it's intentional. To where Yanko's gonna be like, all right, when we're ready to go, I'll kill the Krugs and send it out. I wanna say it's on purpose. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt here. Yankos is the mastermind. All right, my theory is that Yankos just likes collecting pets. <laughs> and, uh, what's be he wanted three sizes of Krug here, but <laughs> there's no other size of Krug, so best he could get is a giant scuttle crab. There are actually three, though. You get the, you get the medium one, and it turns into two smaller. You can get all four sizes of Krug. He's gonna have to kill one of them. Oh no! Do that, You're gonna kill one of your own pets? Hey, but they'll multiply. He'll get twice as many pets. It's like when you've got a pet stick. Someone breaks your stick in half, and you got two sticks. Oh man! You got twice as many pets. Yankos knows how this works. That's He's a really a half man. That's a really a, you know a cup half full way of looking at <laughs> yeah. killing one of your own pets there for you to get two pets. It's like starfishes. They both become real okay, starfish. Okay. Right? Okay. Right. There's there's even a uh, precedent. But yeah, 60 to two in kills. 10,000 gold lead. Europe is definitely smashing this one right now. And the question is, at this point, it's almost like, when will they close out? Looking right now like a Baron bait here as their items continue to push towards fruition. Throws it. Yeah. Has to run away in fear. The pet master is scary here in this one. Looking for a nice back and forth. Richardson getting away. 
sadly, I mean, especially with Lucidity Boots, he's just not that tanky and can't really withstand this front line at all. Give him more damage towards Zite. Not. And Turkey forced away from their side of the map. Yeah, this is the problem here. They're dealing with just a one-man artillery situation with Power of Evil. He's not even super fed on Zareth in the mid lane, but, you know, they're all so far behind. They have no defenses <laughs> that they're not able to deal with. Let's see if uh, Soaz is going to let the... Uh, nope. Let Shelly out. Nope. Shelly remains in the cage. All right. Oh, dodges uh, away nicely. Zite not dodged just as many as needed. Stays alive. Walks away cleanly. I feel like we need to start a petition online or something. European fans get out there and convince Jankos to let Shelly free. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag free Shelly one, I think, would be the, the tag we'd all use. And let's see. Middle lane about to be under fire, you have to imagine. The waves are gone. So as. Ah, hey, so as lets her <laughs> Now, how will they use this? What's the important strategy here, Freak? They're pushing on the bottom side. They're going to create pressure, yeah. draw them away from the Baron. Exactly. It's They're saving it for Baron. So as here to add some stacks to split push alongside Yankos' pet. It's beautiful. 23 minutes Dang. of work have been put into this strategy. <laughs> the timing, impeccable here. Yankos <laughs> on the backside of the Baron. And they're trying to bait in Zerg Sting. They've got oh, him. Oh, he's doing so much damage. Zerg Sting feels the sting as he walks away from the claws of justice. That Yank off. <laughs> that was a bit. He has a lot of titles. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Pokemon Drug Master, Master. Claws of Justice. First Blood King. Uh-huh. Who knows, man? This guy. Aldrin just gets to attack Shelly. I mean, that's why they kept her, her in, in, in the, the kennel. They don't just run around wild. Just runs into, like, wild Nars and dies. Poor Shelly. Never got to even see a turret. Yeah. Turns out Yankos was a better pet owner than Soaz. Yeah. Soaz, very... Uh, Unreliable here. Wait, I, I trust you to watch my cat. What did you do? Well, here we go for an engage. And the pillar is up, but does it matter? Snipe one, snipe two, three, and four coming in. Stomage again cannot get out. Ignar finds the catch. Reckless now. Godlike got the kill credit for this one. But all the work was done by the support there. And now back towards Baron. They might look at the jungle of death. There's no smite to be worried about. Okay, Zite not, and it's going to be Ignar blocking the shots. Reckless completely safe here, and Ignar, it barely even tickles Tom Kench, but then they go, and not much of a chance to stop this Baron attempt at all. Yeah, Tom Kench is one of those guys, you can tickle him, he just never lasts. Oh, Peewee lands a pretty big stun here, but they're going to just take up the Baron and go for the reset. Easy, easy, and clean. Nicely done to Europe so far. We're giving him two deaths and a single turret on a split push, otherwise they have been really in control of this game. Kind of doing it by the book, right? Making sure they're getting the leads, setting up the vision. They had one good teammate when they killed the jungler, and that was enough for Baron. All right, Baron empowered. Trinity Force built here on Soaz. We're pushing away the Nasus Dream. Gonna get the recall off. He does have teleport, so he'll just get right back out onto the field. Uh, you want to get those two points of pressure, as always, with your team. Don't want to let the other end of the claw hanging here. There's Ignar on the top can. He's on the front lines. He saves people. He breaks combos from the enemy team. Mm -hmm. He kills people. He does it all. He protect any attack, dude. He knows how to do everything. <laughs> Ignar's got your back. And with the 12,000 gold lead, Yankos about to get Baldrin's back. Look at the damage output. There's no way out. Give it over to Power of Evil. Why not? Three, <laughs> one, and five. Eight participation. Well done. Two of those at least have been steals. BOE's had a lot of off-screen steals. Yeah. They've been looking good. That's what you're supposed to do with the champion. Yeah. Pretty sure that, for KDA. that was what he was built for. Mm -hmm. 1,480 damage to the snipe from Sight Not. Might never find a champion for that much damage, though. This could be a very difficult game. That will be for Turkey's bot lane inhibitor turret falls. Reckless still has yet to die in this game, by yep. the way. He's got the most kills on his team, fully equipped to uh, jump in there. We're looking for those aggressive rocket jumps. You'll see, he's still got Ignar around to keep him safe. He goes a little bit too crazy. Lands a lightning crit. Feels pretty good about that one. Want to point out, by the way, Static Shiv actually does heal you with Gravitas Hunter. Mm. You want to go for that one as a uh, as a marksman down there. Static Shiv actually does work that way. The knockup, though! Where's <laughs> Ignar? He's not to be seen! Reckless is way too much that, but a kill comes through for the dog champ. Soaz gets one. And the Zipes come through. Will they find some clean up? Ignar there to save Soaz the top side. His favorite Fnatic member, clearly. Another snipe comes through as the Jin is gone. Zaren says, I can do it better. Yankos now dominating the one of the two remaining deathless members of the squad. And Pillar gets him away, though. The chase is back in the leap forward. Frozen Force to kite away the Power of Evil. Now to Rampage with his fourth. And here comes the attacks. The flash forward. They need a bigger boat. They've got this kill pick. Dev Yankos 
getting himself the ace as now the Nexus is open with the turret. Nice now. shots from BOE here yeah. on this Zara. It's impeccable timing, and they're going to be able to take this one. All right, first game of the day. Going to go to Europe here as they wait to find champions to kill to pad their stats, make it look as good as they possibly can. Take it! Get Couple in there! Of fancy footwork moves right there, but Nexus will fall. Europe going to win the first game and improve to one and one, setting up their showdown with LMS later today. European All-Stars said they learned a lot from yesterday from their loss, and they're taking a lot of it out here today mm -hmm. already on the Turkish squad. This is, is interesting because it does set them up. I mean, we now basically have Europe, LMS, and Korea, yeah. all viable options for getting out of this group. So this group, very exciting as far as, uh, you know, who is actually going to be able to exit at the end here. Yeah, Korea at 1-1, their last remaining opponent would be Turkey here on your screen. European LCS 1-1 as well. And they will have to face LMS, who, you know, against many people's considerations, did take down Korea themselves. Yeah, 2-0 so. oh yesterday. Yeah. So strong. Which means a good chance of a three-way tie at 2-1, and one, which means shootouts. 1v1 Howling Abyss for tie breaks. That's going to be exciting stuff. And we'll see who comes through at the top of this group at the end of it all. Going to be exciting. But it does mean that the Turkish squad now down at 0 and 2 do not have a way of advancing into the groups or out of the group stage. But they can still put some impressive performances in. They will still face Korea later today and show one last time what they're all made of. Everyone go full. Every man for himself. Mo. Yep. It's all about creating those highlights. See what they can pull off later in the tournament. Some interesting picks, you know, definitely can gain you some notoriety. Oh, sure. Already. Yeah. Meanwhile, this game, Reckless there, he did die at the end. We we had successfully cast the curse him <laughs> yeah, it was 10 perfect. seconds before. It was perfect. You've done very well for yourself on that one. Yeah, he hasn't died, and he inted. All right, Reckless, uh, unlucky there, but come on, man. He had a great game. He had, he had a great game. He game. had a great game. He absolutely did. I think Yankos had the best game of all of them. He was absolutely incredible there. The... The top lane gank worked out. He, he Classic better jungler wins, dude. Better jungler win. Yankos was actually incredible. But I, I mean, I do want to give him credit, though, right? Sussing out. Um, yep. You're going you're gonna to gank Saw's level two. I'm going to do these three camps and go to the Blast Cone. Like, he planned the path out from the very beginning. Yep, three camps up to Blast Cone. Oh, look, I found a Jarvan. First blood. And it was just kind of beautiful. So I always respect I always respect the obvious forethought where he's like, I know it's coming. I'm going to call us out before you ever do anything. And he was right. I so, love that. Yeah, and it's something where you want to hedge your bets a lot, too, because sure. if if you wait around long enough and, and you're not doing anything, you give up too much. That's why the two-for-one there uh, mm -hmm. is the optimal strategy. Meanwhile, though, that was an exciting game number one. It was exciting. Europe, one and one, could improve more at the end of the day, but now let's send it down to the Dash and the Analyst to break down that game. Thank you very much, Freak. The European All-Star shaking off their loss yesterday and putting together a very dominant game here on day two. And it all started in the top lane. Soaz getting his opportunity to show his stuff on the Nasus after taking a loss to it against Khan back at Worlds. A lot of action in the top lane very early on. Yeah, I like that he took Aerie, so he had Sorcery Adaptive AP, took the Doran's mm -hmm. Ring and the Wave Clear with the E and maxed that first. But really, that first blood came down to the jungle routing from both junglers. Yanko starts on the best side for Kha'Zix to get up there with single target camps and then goes straight up there. And then I don't know what, you know, Stone Mage was doing because going buff to buff is... A little strange when you're still going to go for a level 2 gank and not a level 3. Yeah, and we can roll the cup, but I mean, this could have been a level 2 gank so much so much earlier. Mm -hmm. You can just simply go red to top, right? Like, this is Jarvan doing a level 2 gank. Why are you showing up for a level 2 gank after you've already crossed the entire map? Why not then wait for level 3? He does show up. He is only level 2. Nasus is level 2 as well because it's so delayed, and Soaz did a great job delaying for Yankos to arrive. It felt like there was an inevitability, though, when he came in with where the Nasus was, but the flash, especially the mechanics, mm -hmm. weren't beautiful on the Jarvan either, and it just was a bad look for yeah, the thing I really love about this play as well is we got to see Yankos doing his gromp, kills it, and then he's already in route before mm. they even know that a gank is mm. coming. So it was going to happen one way or another that Yankos was getting up there. It's just the timing of the Jarvan is just so strange for a level 2 gank. I mean, it's a very simple point. If it was a red buff into top lane gank, no chance Yankos is in position for the counter gank. As it played out, it was perfect. And it's a level one Nasus, right? Yep. Which yep. you really can't do anything to survive that. If you are pushed up at all, level one Nasus against the level two J4 that already has a red buff is almost always going to be that guaranteed kill. Uh, and that's why you're trying to do a path like that to pick on Nasus in the early game. But when everything goes wrong like that, the whole plan kind of falls out the window. And, and that's and not the a... only time that everything went wrong <laughs> yeah. for something, somebody rather in this game. I want to head to the bot lane here. Let's take a look. 10:30 into the game. Zeitnot going to come away with a two for oh 
on the European All-Star Dive. I mean, this is sick. Like, he basically just crossed over POE. Dodges the stun, dodges the W, steps out of the queue, goes back, W hits, fourth shot, execute there. That was embarrassing for POE. This is our Ace or Predator replay. Hard to say, though, who's at fault here, you know, or who's... <laughs> <laughs> is it? Well, is I mean, it, like, <laughs> is it, was, it, was it fantastic play from the gym, it's right? Both. Sidestep on everything except for the, you know, and then the Xerath. It's, it, it's one of those situations where it looks like he's missing by a mile, right? Because he jukes one way and he expected to juke another. I know you guys had North American scouting grounds last week. All-Star is kind of a world scouting grounds. We saw Carson, so we know he's probably mm. going to China. He showed his straps. Another NA import. Oh, no, no. He's, Europe he's the That's European scouting player. ground, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we, was, a, we do, there we was an EU in front of that name there, Papa Smithy. I don't know if you saw yeah, those that. Those are definitely some EU school shots. <laughs> but you know what I'm really sad about this game? I feel like we had such a missed opportunity from Europe. When Khan played Nasa Sinda Soaz, we got to see the Rift Herald dance yep. on Fnatic, oh. right? They had the Rift Herald caged. That is the BM we deserve yeah. for All-Stars. <laughs> you leave Shelly in the cage until so you're get ready Baron. to end the game. You get the Baron, you free Shelly, and you make him dance, and it would have been the perfect revenge to what happened to Soaz at yeah. world. That's 100% intentional, by the way, to put her there. You yep. can do it over the wall and put her behind the Krugs and trap her, right. and then you can release her at any time. And they let her out, and she gets nothing. She doesn't even see a turret. That, oh, we need to see now before the event. It was the most anticlimactic release there at, in that moment. Shelly died watching for nothing. her push the lane to, to achieve nothing yeah free willy finally gets freed <laughs> the face plants on the jump yeah oh my nice. god oh get my out the movie ends just ruin that movie it's it's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> no, but, but the other interesting thing that this does right is it kind of opens up that possibility for the three-way tie again yeah. only, it's only game one of the day and a lot could happen but with the two one possibility you know record for a three-way tie it could make this group very interesting yeah you would have to beat lms and the way they played in that early game i think they could be able to do it but it's just bringing it home. And I love three-way ties. The shootout <laughs> could happen. Especially when it's 1v1s. Like, I think that would actually be super hype when you're at All-Stars and you have the potential to perhaps knock Korea out by 1v1ing who is very likely going to be faker. Like, that is kind of the stuff of legends. That, that is, is definitely an yeah. asterisk I'll have to refer to a lot in the future. I mean, it would be really, <laughs> really hype. Yeah, and Papa Smithy in his book of asterisks. <laughs> And, and like you were saying earlier, like if it's a three-way tie, it's seeded by win time, yeah. right? And that, that was, was a fast. fast win by Europe, so they could be waiting in the finals if it is a three-way tie to play the winner of the 1v1. They're setting Bob, themselves so up good. well here after game one on day two. We'll see if Europe can secure a spot, a late, uh, a secure a spot rather, out of groups later in the day. Coming up after the break, North America and the team from Southeast Asia class for a spot out of Group B. Don't go anywhere. Let's hey, go. Jangros, did you know that Wulight rated you above Shox on the handsome list? I'm more handsome than Shox. Yeah, according but to Shox is a girl. Flies a little bit of time and he's not going to burn much. Here comes the team, the flash to follow. Oh! Get first blood, yes! I have one mold. I have one mold. Yeah, yeah. I can hit you, I can hit you, I can hit you. I kill, I kill. Let's push the turret. The juke shoes are in, but does it matter? Oh! Oh! Get shot down oh! for the first kill over. Typical NA mid laner dying in the tower dive. I'm, get, I'm showing but the wave. You did this you ult on purpose to get triple, even though yes. I really. Thank you. Still made. Not a lot of mana. Oh! <laughs> Ignar, you are beautiful. An elite board throws it for to kite away with power of evil. They want to rampage with his fourth. And here comes the attacks. The flash four. We need a bigger boat. Europe gonna win the first game and improve to one and one.